In this video, we're going to take a look at the Unit 6 Lesson 12 practice problems. So for number one here, it just asks you to decide whether the given equation is parallel, perpendicular, or neither to the one shown. So remember when we're trying to identify parallel and perpendicular lines, the slope is a big deal. So let's take a look at the slope of the line that we are given. So the slope of this line, so if I go from this point up and over to this next point that I see, this has a slope of 1 and then over 5. So the given line has a slope of 1 fifth. And now I do see at least one decimal in here, so I'm going to divide this down as well. So we remember what the decimal is. So 1 divided by 5 is a decimal of 0.2. So when we're looking for parallel lines, so if the equations are parallel, then the slope is going to be one-fifth or 0.2. If it's perpendicular, remember perpendicular slopes have opposite reciprocal slopes. So positive, the opposite of positive is negative, and then the flip, so if we flip this fraction over, we'll be at five. So parallel will be one-fifth, perpendicular will be negative five. So this first one is written in slope-intercept form, so we can see the slope is 0.2. Again, that's the same as 0.5, so this is going to be parallel. This next one, the slope is negative 2, so that's neither of these. It's not equal to the slope, and it's not equal to the opposite reciprocal, so this is going to be neither parallel nor perpendicular. Slope here is 5. Again, that's not what we're looking for. It's not the, it's the reciprocal, but it's not the opposite. So this is going to be neither. D is written in point slope form. So we still have the slope right here. Slope is negative 5. That is the opposite reciprocal of positive 1 fifth. So this is going to be perpendicular. Point slope form again with two, okay, two is not the same as one-fifth. Whoops, I don't need to cross it off. I need to write the word neither, okay? This is not the same as one-fifth or its opposite reciprocal, so this is going to be neither parallel nor perpendicular. Um, this one, we would just want to subtract the 5x to the other side, so minus 5x from both sides, and we would see that the slope is negative 5, which is the perpendicular slope. So that is the opposite reciprocal. Number two, so this one um, gives us some different streets here. So we've got Main Street. Okay, so if I just draw Main Street on here, Main Street is parallel to Park Street. Okay, so whoops. So let's draw Park Street. Okay, so here's Park Street. So these are parallel to each other. Okay, and then we've got Elm Street. Um, so Park Street is parallel to Elm Street. So this orange one is going to be parallel to Elm Street. So let me just get Elm Street on here. Okay, and then Elm Street is perpendicular to Willow. Okay, so now Willow Street is going to be perpendicular to um, Elm Street. So let me, whoops. All right, so then um, perpendicular to Elm Street. So let's get a 90 degree angle here. So here is um, Willow. Okay, perpendicular to Elm Street. So how does Willow compare to Main Street? So Willow is the pink one and Main Street is the original. And so if you kind of draw it out here, then you would see that they're perpendicular. You'd also know that the M is the same. So these all have the same m value, slope value, and then this one, the m is the opposite reciprocal. So it's the opposite reciprocal to Elm Street, so it's going to be the op 
opposite reciprocal to Main Street as well. So perpendicular. Um, the line of the graph, y equals 2x minus 4, is transformed by this rule. What is the slope of the image? So remember that this rule right here, when we reflect over the x and the y, so if we reflect something over the x-axis and then over the y-axis, the overall, the overall um, translation is a 180-degree rotation. And remember that a 180 degree rotation will just take a line back onto itself. So the slope is going to be the same. So the slope is going to be 2. Select all equations whose graphs are lines perpendicular to the given graph. Okay, so we're going perpendicular to this. So figure out the slope of the given line. Okay, so the slope of your given line, remember you'll subtract 3x from both sides and then you'll divide by 2. So you'll subtract 3 and divide by 2. You can certainly um, actually write that out. So minus 3x to both sides. So I'm going to go over here so you get 2y equals negative 3x plus 6 and then divide by 2. So y equals negative 3 halves x plus 3. And then you'll see that you get that slope of negative 3 halves. So now a line perpendicular to that. So the perpendicular slope to that is going to be the opposite. So positive and the flip. So we're looking for a slope of 2 thirds for these to be perpendicular to one another. So looking at the slope in each one, so again, we'll subtract 3 and then divide by negative 2. So this is a positive 3 halves slope, not a positive 2 thirds. For this one, subtract 2x from both sides and then divide by 3, not a positive 2 thirds slope. For this one, We'll subtract 2x from both sides and then divide by negative 3. Those negatives will cancel and we'll get positive 2 thirds, which is what we're looking for for perpendicular. Um, this one we can see it's already positive 2 thirds right in the point slope form. This one is negative 3 halves, which we don't like. Okay, that's parallel. We're looking for perpendicular positive two-thirds in slope-intercept form, good. Three-halves, not what we're looking for. Number five, match um, the line with a perpendicular line. So we'll have to find the slope on a couple of these. So remember, for slope, we look at the kind of height of the slope triangle, which is the difference in the y's. So 19 minus 4 gives us 15. And then look at the width or the run here. So 9 minus 12 is negative 3. And then divide those for the slope. So the slope of this one is going to be 15 divided by negative 5. Or sorry, 15 divided by negative 3, which is negative 5. The slope for B will subtract 2x from both sides and then divide by negative 5. So we get positive two-fifths for the slope here. And then C, we can see the slope is two-thirds. So let's take a look at this other side. So let's figure out the slope here by looking at the Y's. So subtract the Y's, 4 minus 1, and you get 3. Subtract the X's, 1 minus 3, and you get negative 2. So then the slope here is going to be negative 3 halves when we divide those. Slope here will be 1 fifth. And slope here is negative 2.5. So maybe you know this as a fraction. So 2 and a half is 5 divided by 2. Um, you could also match up these other two and then um, see what's left. 
So let's take a look. So we want to come up with um, match each line with the perpendicular line. So perpendicular to negative five would be positive and the flip. So positive one fifth. So A and number two go together. So the slope of B was two fifths. Okay, so we would want a negative five halves when we flip this over. So negative five halves and that's number three. The other option you can be doing with perpendicular lines is remembering that the slopes will multiply to negative one. So you could be multiplying negative five times these to see which one gives you negative one. Multiplying two fifths times these to see which one gives you negative one. Um, and so number one is left for C. So this is two thirds perpendicular to this would be negative three halves, which is what we see in number one. All right, the graph of negative 4x plus 2 is translated by the directed line segment AB as shown. What will be the slope of the new image? Remember that translations keep parallel lines. Okay, so it will create a parallel line to this, meaning that the slope will still be negative 4. Um, and I mean, we could even look at um, graphing. So at two and then a slope of negative four would be like this. And then if we just take this and we move it along this segment, okay, it's keeping that same slope. So along this segment, moving it that far is gonna keep a slope of negative four. Select all points on the line with a slope of negative one half that go through this point. So we can um, write the equation of the line and then plug them in. You can also um, do the slope between these two points. Okay, so what, whatever you feel most comfortable with. So this will be y minus the y coordinate. So y plus 1 equals the slope negative 1 half times x minus the x coordinate. So you can plug them into this. You can also take a look at the slope. And if the slope between this point and the given point is negative one half, it would be on the line. And so remember for slope, you're subtracting the y's and you're subtracting the x's. So I did negative one minus two. Now I'm gonna do four minus a negative two. So this is negative three over six, which is negative one half. So this one is on the line. So I'll subtract the x or the y's in the next one. So negative one minus two gives me negative three. Subtract the x's, four minus zero gives me four. That is not negative one half. Um, for this, Next one, I'm gonna go over here. So negative, so this is the exact same point. Okay, so will that be on a line with a slope? Yes, because it is the exact same point. So negative four, one will be there. Um, negative one minus one. So again, subtracting y minus y is negative two and then subtracting the x's, so taking this x four minus this x zero, so four minus zero is four, negative two divided by um, four is negative one half, so that is on the line. And then the last one, negative one minus eight is negative nine, Four minus negative three, so it turns to plus three is seven. That is not negative one half, so that one is not on the line. All right, then um, number eight, one way to define a circle is the set of all points that are the same distance from a given center. So how does this equation relate to that definition? Um, so this equation is just saying... Um, this is the set of all points 
r units away from the point h k that center so this this is just giving you um th the set of all points that are r units away from h k would be a way to say that um or the distance you could say they're saying that the distance the horizontal distance and the vertical distance so that eight that x minus h is the width of the slope triangle so you could think of it like that um that x minus h is the width and y minus k is the height So then when you do the Pythagorean theorem, then you're getting that R value. So then you can substitute in. So this is, if we use the Pythagorean theorem with that, you would end up with the radius. So this is, oops. So this is giving you that kind of width. And then this is giving you the height to that point. And then when you plug it into the Pythagorean theorem, um, you should get the radius.